Good morning. My name is Gary Esslinger. I'm treasure manager of the Elephant Butte Irrigation District. And we're here at the gauging station below Caballo Reservoir, where we measure the flow coming out of the release that we ordered from the Caballo Reservoir. This gauging station is, is critical and, and important to the Rio Grande Compact. The three states uh, look at this gauging station as the, the station that uh, determines the flow of water to the Rio Grande project that includes a Mexican delivery to the country of Mexico, a delivery to Texas, where the El Paso Water Improvement District takes their water to deliver to their farmers in El Paso and, and the valley south of El Paso. And then also where Elephant Butte Irrigation takes its water and diverts it out of the river and delivers it to our canal system to eventually get to the farmer's fields. Um, this is an exciting time this year for the fact that it's the first time in many years where we have a 14 inch lot allotment. Now that isn't the regular full and normal allotment, which would be three acre feet, but in the years past, the drought has driven us down to only six, seven, eight inch allotments. So to have a 14 inch allotment, um, the, math, the math works out to uh, actually about three and a half months of water for our farmers this year so they can get several irrigations off of this new allotment and this new allocation that we've presented for um, approval for the entire Rio Grande project. Again, this station here, we have cableways that we come across and we measure the flow of water here. The volumetric uh, uh, hydrograph is located across in this little metal building we also do um, technical uh, instrumentation with sonograms and, um, and uh, sonar, Doppler radar uh, instruments so we can get an accurate, accurate um, flow of the water going to the project. As I mentioned before, we get this measured by the Bureau of Reclamation as well as we come up here every day and measure it when the order changes. So EBID is here at this station every day to measure anytime the, the river changes because of an order placed by the farmers that utilize this surface water. The sur surface water is vital to our valley. It is the heart, it's the blood that, that makes this valley and the crops grow. And it is certainly a thrill to be here and, and look at this this river flowing at this point in time in in May, we looked at uh, for uh, look forward to an irrigation season that will last through June and July, the heat of the summer, and into August. And this all will benefit the farmers below, who bank on utilizing surface water. They would rather use surface water than turn on their wells. And this supplements that. Um, those wells that are turned on when we don't have the surface water available. So today you might, you're, you're seeing about 2,500 cubic feet per second flowing. Now that is just to push the water down to a 110 mile reach to El Paso in the Mexican heading. When we have made that, that push and it's, it's met its, its delivery point, then we'll back off this river and bring it and start bringing it down to meet the order that is placed by the farmers in New Mexico, EBID, in Texas with the El Paso Water Improvement District and with the uh, Mexican delivery into Mexico. A culmination of that then initiates uh, the irrigation season. And, and we are just excited that we can stand here and, and look forward to a successful water season and certainly one that would bring a little bit more water to the farmers that that uh, they have not seen in the past. My name is Matthew Pedrosa. I'm the civil engineering technician with the Bureau of Reclamation and my responsibility is the stream gauge monitoring of the Rio Grande as it exits Caballo Dam. 
I'm setting up to make a measurement using an acoustic Doppler profiler uh, boat. And this instrument uh, tracks velocity of the water and uses a depth finder to sound out the volume of the, of the flows. And this is conducted every time there's a change out of the dam of over 100 to 150 CFS. And we've had a lot of success in the last two years of using this. Um, we've been able to make comparison measurements with the mechanical meter, which historically has been used to measure flows. And in cooperation with EBID and EP1, we've been able to obtain a really good stream gauge record at this site. So this is the methodology for completing an ADCP stationary flow measurement. This has been in use at the stream gauge at Caballo for going on two years now. Uh, the boat in the water has a sonic transducer that uses the Doppler shift methodology to obtain a velocity of the speed of water. In addition, it sounds out the depth to determine how deep or how high the water column is at a particular station in the river. Uh, the manned cable cart that I'm on is marked at five foot intervals. So we're able to divide up the total width of the channel and evil, even increments. So we're able to minimize any bias and flow as it is a ununiform flow throughout this, the channel with the higher velocities being in the center and the slower velocities on the, on the edge of each bank. Using a radio, the boat communicates with its computer and I'm able to program the stationing as it's located within the channel. And once it's in place, I'll activate it to start recording 40 seconds worth of samples. At that time, it's profiling the water and then it's obtaining anywhere between eight to 30 subsections or subsamples within that section of the water column. Each of those subsections contain a point velocity, which at the end of that station is then computed into a mean average velocity. This process is report, uh, repeated every five feet throughout the width of the channel until a total velocity and a total discharge is obtained. <laughs> well, I'm Joe Lack, the Lack Farms, and we're in partnership with my wife's family, the Carsons, and we come together and built this uh, super onion shed. And what we do here is bring onions in from our farms and, and other people that grow onions for us, and we package them, and we send them all over the country. But that's what we do here at Real Valley Onion, and we're uh, a fourth owner in, in this operation. We have family that that also helps us very much. And my wife, Rosie, is the one that manages the shed. So I'll turn the management talk over to her. Joe Paul and I have been married for 45 years, and we are a diversified agricultural family farm. Onions is just part of what we grow. We grow a lot of feeds, alfalfa, corn, wheat. We grow vegetables, onions, chili, cotton, pecans. We run cattle. And in all, in all every part of our in all, every part of our rotations, water is critical. Water is critical, more so on the shallow rooted crops like onions and pecans, but it's essential to all the crops. Alfalfa, when it has a good root system, it can tolerate poor water, but when you're trying to establish new stands, you need good, good water, low sodium, sweet water. We're and, and, and good water is, is the biggest asset to that survival. You know, a normal yield for Joe Paul and I on onions has been 1,200 sack yields, which is not extreme because we are in the lower portion of this hatch, hatch watershed. So we naturally fight salts more so than most because we're in a naturally high water table. So realistically, our onion yields have always tracked around 1,250 pound units per acre. Since the lack of river water, it's hard for us to push 800. And when you're pushing an 800 sack yield, you've you've increased your growing costs by at least 40% because you're adding any type of, of water buffer that you can. We're always trying to burp the, burp the water for the irrigation wells. We're trying to release those sodiums. We're trying to increase the permeability of it. We're trying to make the nutrients be more accessible. And so we're, every irrigation, we're adding sulfurs. 
we're adding calciums. We've increased our growing costs by at least 30% just to try to maintain an average yield. The hopes of having those exceptional yields are, are gone until we can condition these soils with good water. Most of our crops are based on supply and demand. When there's no supply, the demand is higher and prices are, prices are reflected there. Another thing that we're seeing is that we're forced to go to, to we're forced to import product because we just cannot we cannot meet the demands of our of our, our customers with domestic grown onions because because of the yields are down. New Mexico, we are unique to the onion industry because we can grow overwinter onions, we can grow intermediate onions. So we actually have a 12-week production cycle that you don't see anywhere else in the United States. Even California, as, a, as long based as California is, we have a longer growing season than even California. And so your summer onions, is which is what we do, summer onions, depend on New Mexico for the better supply. The thing that Rosie Shirt sees a lot every day is what we call soil health. And when you're putting good canal water that, like you say, we, you can call it sweet water, you can just call it really water that has very little salt and very little mineral in it and because of that it flushes it down it brings your soil back into a very healthy state a healthy piece of ground will produce at its best whenever those situations are, are ideal so what that canal water does for us on the land is that it pushes those salts down it increases the availability of all nutrients to the plant and it makes that plant healthier and it gives it an optimum yield and we need that. Like Rosie says, our cost and our competition is so hard. We, we struggle when we have a good yield. It really kicks our fanny when we start dealing with, with, with half yields or three quarter yields and, and, and those kind of places because it just costs so much to grow things now. The, the production side of this thing increases every year and we don't have that increase in price to match that increase of cost. So one of the things that we can do is try to get our soil healthy enough to make big yields to offset that. That, that ratio, but uh, it's just unmeasurable the difference that the water does to the ground, and it's unmeasurable the, the yields that we have when we're dealing with good ground. And, and, and that's what that water does for us. It brings our ground back into a healthy situation, and we desperately need that. We, we got used to it, Gary, for 20, 30 years, then we got in that 20 year drought, and, and, and man, we, we're just not used to trying to farm ground that, that, that gum salty up here on this valley. But we are, we're still here, <laughs> thank God, and, uh, and we're going to continue to be here. But if we can get canal water and we can put it on our ground, it just makes our ground so much healthier. And we need that. We desperately need that because our, our ground, if you looked at it today, would be in a minus. We need to bring it back to at least zero or plus. So we desperately need that canal water right now to flush that ground out. Good morning, Joe Lack up in the Rincon Valley in a field of chili. And we were just sitting here talking about the value of good canal water on a piece of ground that has some salt issues. One of the things that I think will simply illustrate something that's so important is that these plants enable for them to pull nutrients from the ground into their tissue, whether it be a pecan tree behind us or these plants, is the ability to be saltier than the ground around it, basically. That's real simple science, but if this ground's salty, we're pumping salty water, and this crop gets a load on it, well, then it has to compete for just the nutrients and the fertilizers and all the things that we need just to get those nutrients to the fruit that it's trying to develop and make some yield on. So simply said, when we have good canal water, we push these salts down, we have a great soil health that's neutral. It doesn't have all them elements and salts in it that fights this plant for just survival and yield. And we think it's so important that we put canal water on this ground to push those salts down at any time we have the opportunity we use it to the fullness of its ability in other words if we get 14 inches or two feet or five inches we use every bit of it every time and 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 and, and we just want to encourage others to do that because it keeps our soil healthy good morning i'm uh, gary esslinger treasure manager of elephant butte irrigation district standing out here in this chili field is is very important for folks all over the country for this is the Hatch Valley. This is where the capital of, of Chile comes from, Hatch, New Mexico. And right now we have a 14 inch supply allotment to our farmers. And um, we're so excited that they can now actually use their surface water to, on these plants that are in the ground to help push the salt down and bring that 
that, that growth of that chili plant up to where it's providing the fruit that everybody uh, desires to have on their, on their table or in a rest, Mexican restaurant. So to be here today, when we opened up on May 1st, to allow these farmers up here in Hatch to get delivery of surface water from the Rio Grande. We are excited to be here, to be with this farmer, one of our board members from the Irrigation District as well, and, and just show the, show the country what it is to, to, to make a chili plant and to have that chili back on the table uh, at dinner time. Surface Surface water up here is, is valuable to these farmers because through the winter time, they're trying to grow these crops and, and, and bring these seeds up into a plant size. And so they, they want those first irrigations that they can to size their onions or to grow their chili or to begin the, uh, the development of the pecan orchards that they have up here, their alfalfa, cotton. It all comes to, to a head when you can bring forth enough water that the good Lord has provided to us from the watersheds up north in Colorado and, and northern New Mexico that we can now start filling up our reservoirs after we've been in 23 years of drought and begin increasing our allotment because these farmers have had to deal with four to six inch allotments for many, many years since we've, uh, this drought has hit us here. Uh, it's been about 23 years of drought that we're fa we have faced, and now this is the first sign of a good water supply. We're hoping that we can take it from 14 inches to two acre feet to the normal allotment of three acre feet, but it's gonna take time, and uh, certainly this is a good start, and we're thankful for that. You can hear in the background a pump running over here, and what we're doing, we're pulling through that drip system ahead of canal water, that surface water. We're bringing it down the ditch and we're coming over here. Of course, we're picking it up with our pump and we're putting this canal water right into this drip system. And man, that is so needed right now. And it's uh, all due to the fact that this modern technology, you know, we can flush that canal water a little more often, but when it gets in this tape and it gets in this water, it's very clean enough for it to be used very effectively. And that's what we're doing right now. You can hear that pump running and we're pumping that canal water as hard as we can. One of the things that the drip system does is that it brings the moisture right here to the center line of the row, and then the moisture pushes the salts out to the edges. When you do row irrigation, you have your water coming in your row, and what you do, you push all your salts and everything to the middle of your plant. So ideally, if we can keep those salts moving away from the roots and from that plant and give it good canal water, then what it does, it has a soil environment right here that's ideal for growing chili. So Joe Paul, what is what are you shooting for here as far as size? What okay. are you looking for? We need a, an onion. This this is what we're shooting for this size. These pre-packs and these little ones like that, most of these will go ahead and make to what we call a, a, a large medium or a jumbo, and that's what we have to sell. We we go our food service, like Rosie said, we're 80% food service. And we and, need and, an onion like that. Explain to me what that food service is. Food service is all your restaurant business, okay. whether it be McDonald's, Wendy's, uh, cruises where people put so many people on a boat and take them out in the ocean for months <laughs> at a time. You know, they're feeding them and they want a real pretty onion that slices. It's a single center that put on the hamburger and it's just one pretty slice and they don't have, a, you know, they can chop them up and that's okay too. But they really on them salad bars. When you go up to eat a salad, Gary, you want to get that big old pretty red onion that's got those big greens. They're real lush, they're yeah. real tasty. And that's what we're shooting for. And, that, and that's what food service is. It's places where we feed people. Great. And they eat the onion right from here. And, and All we do is cut it and give it. So these onions from New Mexico are on a carnival cruise? Absolutely. <laughs> we sell a ton of onions to those uh, different cruise companies wow. Wow. there in Florida. And, and it really hurt us when we had COVID because they shut all them down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we're, back in, we're back in the swing of things and we're going for it again. Great. So yeah, Great. that's what we do. So this has already been irrigated with surface water. Yes, yes it has. We, and, and, and you so can see now it's, you're it's, seeing the development of the going from a medium to a, a large. To, to a large medium and, to a small and, jumbo, you bet. And, and, and what's the difference between irrigations that, that, is it a quarter inch or what do you? Yeah, what we, what, we, what we try to do to these onions, you know, you can see we're irrigating them here right now. We try to run, uh, every three days, we try to put a half inch 
or more on these onions, depending on what, how much they pull. If they need more, we'll give them more water. What we don't want, Gary, from here on is to stress this onion even a little bit. Some people will water them almost every day and others, you know, there's a, there's a pretty good philosophy difference in that. Right. But we try to put a, a half inch to an inch on them every uh, th three days. Wow. You know, that's, that's our frequency. And that makes the size. It, well, and it, it, it makes a difference keeps, in the It size. keeps it growing. You're, you're not going through that stress. You know, when you flood it, you give it too much water, it shuts down. And then it gets dry, it shuts down. If we can keep that saturation at a level where that plant is, is, is sucking on that water just like your needs, you know, you can't go up five gallons of water and you're, yeah. and then if you don't have any water, you're thirsty. So what we try to do is feed that plant exactly what it needs. And the frequency is going to depend on the size of the onion and how much it pulls. So what's the root look like on that onion right well, there? Let, that... let, let's pull that bad boy out and kind of get an idea what that root looks like. Wow. See, that's a, see, that's a nice root. And, uh, and it's shallow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All these onions are very shallow rooted. You can tell. And uh, so we got to get that water right there. And that's the beautiful thing about drip. You're putting that water right where it needs. You're putting all those elements from fertilizers to, to micros right where you need it. And uh, as a result of that, these, these, these onions just perform better. We yeah. make a better yield. Again, this is Gary Esslinger. And um, if you enjoyed this video, we hope that you will hit the like button and um, give us your, your feedback. We appreciate it and we're excited that you can see this water all summer long going through the Mesilla, Hatch Valley and the Mesilla Valley. Thank you very much.